I'm Swiss, and much like every other male Swiss citizen, I served in the military in my 20s. I had to. 22 years after my last day of service, I decided to go back and join the military peacekeeping force K4 in Kosovo in former Yugoslavia. K4 has been in place for almost 20 years now, ever since Bill Clinton under NATO command ended the genocide and war in Kosovo. Now, why would I do such a thing, you might ask? Why the hell would I join the military again at 50? Good question. And it might sound corny, but it truly was a midlife thing for me. I was approaching 50, my dad passed away a few years earlier, and I had a good hard look at my life and asked myself, what are the things I don't want to look back on? What are the regrets I don't want to have? And doing meaningful international work was one of the things I absolutely still wanted to do and experience. But rejoining the military at almost 50, let me tell you, is not straightforward. So let me start with a little story. It's a dark winter morning last year in Switzerland. I just started my training and I dropped my bulletproof vest on the hard asphalt and I'm being yelled at by a sergeant, 25 years my junior and well below my rank. I'm almost 50 years old. Two days ago, I said a painful goodbye to my two young boys in Seattle. I'm here to be of service, to make a difference. I'm being chewed out by a young punk. It took all that I had not to make a snarky comment. But I bent over, I picked up the vest, and I said nothing at all. I did ask myself, though, how can I be sure I never, ever drop this vest ever again? Little did I know that this would be one of many lessons in humility I would have to learn over the course of the next nine months. Now, humility is not often talked about in the military, and believe me, much less often lived on the ground. And yet humility can make us better leaders in whichever organization we are a part of, and better human beings in our personal lives. As a commander of peacekeepers, I would be in charge of a team in the south of Kosovo. All throughout my training, I was a keen student of the conflict, asked a lot of questions. How can history explain the war? What are the underlying co and causes of the conflict? At the end of my training, I felt I had a good hand on the situation. I felt that pretty much had all the answers. And then, Four weeks into our deployment, we were invited to an end of year school play in one of the remote villages in our area. We sat down and then could not believe what we were hearing and seeing. School kids reenacting the war, shooting Serbs on the ground, showing off hand-to-hand -hand combat, all to the roaring applause from parents, teachers, and politicians. As I sat there politely applauding, I felt anger, I felt disgust, I felt shame. And I asked myself, are we failing as peacekeepers here? Are we supposed to shape the stories these children get taught at home and at school? Are we supposed to build peace in their hearts as well as their cities? All difficult questions I had no easy answers to. The first one, though, I could answer, we're not failing because there's no war. And almost anything is better than war. And there's no war in large parts because the peacekeeping force, because we're on the ground. Towards the end of the deployment, I was invited to say my round of goodbyes, and I met with the mayor of the town I was stationed in. At the end of the meeting, he got up, shook my hand across the coffee table, and said, thank you, Captain. Thank you for being here. Without you here, the Serbs would be right back, killing, raping, and murdering our wives and children. Thank you, Captain. As he shook my hand, I felt deep empathy towards his personal situation so different from my own in Seattle, so different from my family's situation in Central Europe, an hour's flight away from Kosovo, and ask myself, are we peacekeepers maybe even in the way of this conflict resolving itself? Are we a crutch? Are we maybe enabling this conflict to go on longer than it should? Again, hard questions I had no answers to whatsoever. I return back to Seattle a much humbler person, professional, dad, and indeed peacekeeping officer. The more I studied, the less I seemed to know. The more I learned, the less I seemed to understand, and then it dawned on me that that's what humility and maybe even wisdom is all about. Not just in military peacekeeping, but in life. I will never have all the answers. You will never have all the, we will never have all the answers, but we must. We must absolutely always strive to ha ask better, deeper, more meaningful, more insightful, more difficult questions. 
Or as it was for me, from how can I be sure I never ever drop this fucking vest ever again to are we peacekeepers actually in the way of this conflict resolving itself? Thank you.